Hi there, I'm Coach Rob Wilby. I'm the head coach here at Team Oxygen Addict. Thanks very much for checking out this, the second video in our series on triathlon training for the time crunched age grouper. Now, if you've not checked out the first video in the series, I encourage you to go back and check that out. Thanks to everyone who's left comments and questions on there, and we'll get to some of those later in this video. Now, I'm really excited to share with you some valuable training information in this video. If you're serious about improving your triathlon performance this year, you've definitely come to the right place. Now in that first video I talked about how you can use reverse periodization to make the most of your limited training time to get the best bang for your buck and the most improvement to your overall triathlon race time from whatever limited training time you've got. Now that's very different to traditional periodization which has you doing lots of long slow miles over the winter months. The reverse periodization approach has you focusing on improving your bike functional threshold power or in basic terms your bike fitness over the winter, reducing the amount of swimming that you're doing and doing no fast or hard running at all. So it's quite a change from the majority of training advice that you'll hear and I appreciate that that's different to what a lot of people are saying and I intend to address a lot of those concerns later on because they are valid and we believe we've got valid answers to those as well. Now, in this video, I'm going to go even further. I'm going to share with you specific swim sessions to improve your swim, specific bike training sessions that will increase your functional threshold power, specific run training sessions that will allow you to get fitter with a vastly reduced risk of getting injured, and real world examples of the functional threshold power increases that athletes on Team Oxygen Addict have had by following these training plans this year. By the end of this video, I really want you to understand how you can make the best use of your limited training time. I don't want you worried you're doing the wrong session and wasting your time. I want you confident that you understand what training to do and why. And because of that, I'm going to share those real examples of specific training sessions that my athletes do. You can take them away and do them for yourself and see the results that you get. So first up, who am I and why should you listen to me? Well, I'm Coach Rob Wilby. I'm the founder and the head coach here at Team Oxygen Addict. I'm a British Triathlon Federation coach. I'm a coach, educator and assessor. I'm a Training Peak Certified Level 2 coach. I've got a degree in Sport and Exercise Science. And in addition to being the British Triathlon Certified Coach, I'm also coach certified by UK Athletics and the Amateur Swimming Association here in Great Britain. I've been coaching for a long time. I've been a professional triathlon coach for the last seven years. And in that time, I've coached hundreds of athletes from total beginners to first time Ironman finishers all the way through to Kona qualifiers, world championship and European championship age group medalists. My articles have appeared in 220 Triathlon magazine, Totally Active magazine, the Training Peaks blog, I'm the host of the Oxygen Addict Triathlon podcast and I've been a, a coach contributor on the Cup of Tri podcast, the Ironman Talk podcast, the Slice of Tri and the Run to the Top podcast. So I've got some experience here to back up the things that I'm about to tell you. So listen, I don't want to waste your time. Let's jump right into these specific training session examples. First up, here is a, an example of a classic functional threshold power session on the bike. This is a screenshot from Training Peaks. This is what you'll get with the Team Oxygen Addict plan. And it's really simple visual representation and a description of how you're going to increase your functional threshold power. So before we do this, we'll do a test and we'll work out exactly how much power you can put out at that functional threshold level. If you haven't got a power meter, that's okay. We'll talk about ways within the team that you can do this using a heart rate monitor or even using perceived exertion. And essentially what we're going to focus on here is in order to make you fitter on the bike, we need you to be training at or around that 100% of FTP level. So this session here is my classic go-to session number one. We've got a solid warm-up and then we've got 30 minutes of hard interval training wrapped up in an hour-long session. This particular one is six intervals of five minutes with a minute's recovery between each one. And as long as you are at that 100% of FTP level, you're working at the appropriate level that's going to give you the maximum bang for your buck. That's to say, you can't get any fitter than training at this level. If you go harder than this, well, you're actually just wasting a little bit of training energy because you're going to get the maximum training benefit from being at 100% 
without needing to go any harder than this. So we can be exact, we can be scientific, and we can get you training at exactly the level that we want you to do. Now within the team, we'll do training sessions like this twice a week on the bike, usually indoors on the turbo trainer, and we'll have a third training session that's either outdoors at the weekend if time allows, or if not, we've got a third um, indoor trainer session you can do as a substitute there. So with two focused hour sessions a week over an eight week block, we've got to ask the question, what's, a, what's the kind of result we're going to get here from our training plan? So here we go. These are real world FTP percentage increases after an eight week block from members of Team Oxygen Addict over the, uh, the winter period just gone as I'm recording this video. And you can see here we've got results ranging from a 19% increase down to about a 5% increase. Now, I think the higher increases, to be honest, they're not typical. They are, they're astoundingly big in an eight week block. For the most part, we seem to see a six to 8% increase over an eight week block. But of the guys that I called up on the, uh, the Facebook group recently to ask them what their percentage increase was at the test they've just done a few weeks ago, these were the 10 or 11 guys who got back to me. So you can see we've got a we've got a range from there five percent through to nineteen percent. I'm confident in saying that we're in that sort of six to eight percent range. That's a reasonable expectation for what people can um, can expect over an eight week block. Beginners tend to get a bigger increase. People new to bike focused training tend to get a bigger increase. And athletes who've been training a while, who've done similar training to this, will tend to get slightly smaller end of that range there. And look, just to show you these are real figures, here's a screenshot from our Facebook group. These are the actual guys who have been telling us these are the sessions that we've done and these are our actual percentages increases. So, you know, a little bit of uh, a genuine, we're not making this up here. <laughs> All right, moving on. So for real examples of our swim training sessions, what we're going to focus on here is I've already said we're going to reduce the amount of swimming that you're going to do because I don't believe that just going out swimming is going to make you a better swimmer. That old line of practice makes perfect isn't true. Practice makes permanent in terms of swimming and just doing a lot of swimming is going to embed any stroke imperfections you've got into your muscle memory. So we're going to spend your valuable training time actually practicing correct technique. And here's an example of one of the training sessions that we'll do. This is what I call a drill CSS session. Half of the session is focused on specific drills that are going to get you fitter. Uh, sorry, not get you fitter, they're going to get your technique improved. And then the second part of this session is going to be what's going to improve your fitness. So we're going to work through a range of drills. The 636 drill, front skull, mid skull, head down, doggy paddle are all drills that are going to address body position, catch and feel for the water. Now these are a range of drills I've used coaching on pool deck with real world athletes and I know that they're a general real good catch all drill that's going to help improve the majority of stroke flaws for the majority of people who don't have access to a real world swim coach. Now we've also got the access to do video analysis and remote video analysis on our athletes but if you haven't got access to that these drills you can go and check them out on the internet are guaranteed to help improve all aspects of your catch and pull so they're really worth focusing on and what I like to do here is you can see sets of 50 meters of swimming where the first 25 is a drill focusing on whatever that drill is and the second 25 is easy full stroke where you're trying to feel the effect of whatever that last drill was actually embedding it into your stroke the second half of your session here is going to be swimming at CSS pace, or that's an analogy for threshold swim pace. So comfortably hard swimming with relatively short recoveries. So in an hour long swim session here, we've got a good chunk of stroke improvement and we've got a good chunk of fitness improvement as well. In terms of the run sessions that we're gonna do, now I mentioned earlier that we're not gonna do very very much specific fast running. And in fact, during the winter months, my athletes are not gonna run fast at all. And the reason for that's simple. Running fast is the most common way to get injured. Injuries are gonna limit your ability to train and that is gonna limit your ability to improve. Now, this run session is a bit of an eyebrow raiser for a lot of people because they come in expecting to be given hard work by a coach. And what I tell them is every 10 minutes, I want you to walk for a minute. So this nine one means that you're gonna go out and run at an easy pace for nine minutes, and then you're gonna walk for a minute. 
Now the real benefit of this is during that walk break you are going to recover and because you're recovering as part of the training session you'll have a much faster recovery overall from the session that you're doing. You won't get sore after your long runs anywhere near as much as you currently probably do and the knock-on effect of this is that when you then move forward and string together weeks and weeks and weeks of consistent running without getting yourself injured you are going to build a really strong, durable runner's body. We're working really hard on the bike and your cardiovascular fitness, and you're going to end up as an all-round, rounded triathlete. Now, some common questions that came up from video one, and I've, I've drawn these together into sort of threads here. A lot of people were saying, why do more triathletes not train this way in the reverse periodization way if it's so effective? And I think part of the reason is, people come from a cycling background the old school cyclists don't do this this kind of training very much maybe it's because they're just going out and love riding the bikes and and that's totally valid but i don't think it's the most effective use of your training time even pros like joe skipper and lionel sanders that i've interviewed for my podcast they say it's the hard interval work at functional threshold power and above that's really been the key for them to improve their bike fitness so by getting in and using that training time in the most effective way you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck I'm certain that everyone who's come into the team and tried this has become convinced about its effectiveness when they've seen the results. And I encourage you that if you're, if you're not convinced, give it a try. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get yourself fitter even without realizing it. Now, another common question is, I've read that I need to swim three times a week for an hour each time if I'm serious about improving. And, you know, that's a valid point. If you go and swim three times a week for an hour each time, you are going to get massively improved fitness. And if you are really serious about improving your swimming, there's no question that the best way to do it is having a structured swim coaching plan and swimming frequently. But for most athletes, if you haven't got the time to be swimming three times a week, I don't think it's the most effective use of your limited training time. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the swimming down to once or maybe twice a week and use that training time, especially during the winter where it's most effective and that's putting your effort into hard bike sessions. Um, as I said, I do think there are people who are going to really benefit from doing more swim training than this, but for the majority of people who who want to become better all-rounded triathletes, we can spend our training time in a different way. Now, a third question was very common was, I just don't understand how I'm going to get to be a faster runner if I'm only ever doing easy and steady runs. It, it kind of sounds too good to be true and it doesn't make sense. And you know, I hold my hands up. It doesn't seem to make any sense. It holds true that all the fast runners you've seen at a running club are doing hard interval sessions. But my challenge to you here is take a step back and think, I'm not a runner. I'm a triathlete. I've got swim, bike and run to all fit in. And I'm already doing two hard interval sessions a week on the bike. So that is increasing your cardiovascular fitness, which is going to have the same effect on your running fitness cardiovascularly as doing those interval sessions would be in running. So by only using your run sessions on a steady or an easy level, what we're effectively doing is we're building a strong and durable body. The bike sessions are going to build your cardiovascular fitness and that means that when it comes to running races you're going to find that you're much faster than you think you are. Now in our next video here's what I'm going to teach you. We're going to show you some case studies from Team Oxygen Addict members. Now these are real athletes just like you in the real world with busy demanding lives outside a triathlon who followed our training plans this year. We're going to look at their actual race performances, not just put some FTP percentage number increases on the screen, but I'm going to show you how the training is translated into race day performances that were, in many cases, way beyond what they expected or even hoped for. And I'm also going to show you one massive and surprising benefit of these focused, intense bike interval training sessions that I'll be having you doing within the team. And it's not going to be a result that you're expecting, believe me. It's a real, it's a real result from left field, this one. Now, one last thing I want you to do for me. So that you see the next video when we release it, I want you to go to the Oxygen Addict Facebook page and click like. 
so that'll make sure this comes up in your feed when the next video is released and do me a favor if you've got any questions about how to train most effectively leave the question in the comments here or email me at coachrobwilby at oxygenaddict.com and I'll do my best to answer the question for you either by return of email or as part of this video thanks very much for listening I hope it's been helpful for you go away and give this a try and let's see what the results give you thanks very much guys and I'll speak to you again soon